This is Math 142, part two for section 8.4. We're still dealing with these parametric equations. And what I'd like to do is uh, just investigate um, some elements of this, of the graph of this, so then we can go backwards. In other words, if I give you the description, you should be able to write this equation. But let's go, let's go from the equation to the description first. And so if, as I look at this, notice that, um, you know, I, I don't have a range on t, but, you know, t is going to be from some value to some other value. But t changes. And let's talk about as t changes by 1. So everyone, every time t has 1 added to it, notice what happens is as t increases by 1, my x here will increase by 3. Right? If t is 1, we're adding 3 to it. But if t is 2, we're adding 6 to it. And then every time t increases by 1, since this is just t, uh, y increases by 1. So I actually know the slope of this. The slope of this should be 1 third. And we looked at this problem in the, in the last lecture. But the slope of this equation I can tell is 1 third. The other thing I can tell is I can read a point that this goes through right away. Because when t is 0, Notice the 3t becomes a 0 and the t becomes a 0. So this also then goes to the point negative 4, 5. Right? Because when t is 0, x is negative 4. When t is 0, y is 5. So let's go the opposite direction then and see if we can build up um, a parametric equation given a description. So find a parametric equation for the line with a slope of 4 that passes through the point 2, 6. Well, I know that it passes through the point 2, 6, so x is 2 and y is 6. So when t is 0, x is 2 and y is 6. I can almost think of that kind of as a starting point. And then let me think about how this is going to be changing. If the slope is 4, that means it goes over 1, up 4. So every time that x increases by 1, y increases by 4. So if x is increasing by t, y must be increasing by 4t. And let me, you know, I could um, change it up a little bit. What if my slope had been uh, 2 thirds instead? Well, that would mean rise over run. Every time this goes over 3, this goes up 2. So as x increases by 3, 3t, uh, y would increase by 2, 2t. Yeah, just think of, one, of t as like this, like going by 1, going by 1. So as t goes by 1, x is changing by 3, y is changing by 2. So it's keeping that constant slope. Let's do another one like this. So I have some uh, line that passes through negative 3, 5, and 2, 7. I should say it's a line. And I want to write the parametric, parametric equation for it. So let me maybe start with a sketch. Negative 3, 5 is a point, And then 2, 7 is another point. And I have a line that goes through these points. So let me th think about this slope. My change in x goes from negative 3 to 2. So that goes over 5. And my change in y goes from, goes from 5 up to 7, so that's a change of 2. So as x is changing by 2, y is changing by 7. Those are, those are deltas change in the triangle. And I could start at either one of the two points. If I, if I choose to start at this point, x is negative 3 when y is 5. And then as x changes by 5, y changes by 2. So I could write it that way. You know, and I could I could have it go through the point. I could say 2, 7 is my starting point instead. So instead of using the negative 3, 5, I could use the point 2, 7. It's really the same line. It's just I'm referencing a different point to, quote, start from. So writing um, these parametric equations from lines, you just need to think about the slope, what slope means, change in x, change in y, and pick a point that you're going to start from.
so what I'd like to do next is a is a little shift um, in what we just talked about, and I want to talk about graphs of, of this type. We've already talked about them a little bit, but I really want to stretch your thinking on them just just a tad. So, so we're going to use Desmos for this. And remember, uh, in parametric equations, I have to enter them as a point on Desmos, and then um, I need to mess with this range of t values. So this will go from 0 to, to 2 pi. Now cosine t sine t, x equals cosine t, y equals sine t is a circle. We know that. Uh, last time we messed around with like, let's say this was 2, it stretches it out to 2 and negative 2 in the x direction, and I don't know if this was 4, stretches it out to 4 and negative 4 in the y direction, gives us an ellipse. So that's that's pretty pretty straightforward, I think. So, for example, if I change this to a 6, well, that's a 4. You can imagine it will go from 6 to negative 6 in the x direction and from 4 to negative 4 in the y direction. So it'll just look like that ellipse right there. Now, what I'd like to do is just mess around a little bit with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here and change the... Um, change the periods on these. So I'm going to make uh, this maybe go around twice as this goes around three times. Let's make that a three and a five. Wow, look what happens. It just goes crazy. Now I want you to notice a couple of things here. The six and the four, those still control this outside. Like this six is the width in the x direction. This 4 is giving us this, this height in the y direction, 4 to negative 4. But now, what does this 3 and this 5 do? So remember, this part right here is all, is all x. So this is x right here. So basically, I'm thinking about this edge of the x. Notice it comes out to 6 and back to negative 6. But this 3, notice it touches it three times. It kind of has three times it cycles to the end of it. And then for this, for the y value, it's out to four, down to negative four, there's that value. And the five, one, two, three, four, five. And it comes out to that five times. So let's, uh, let's do another one and, and maybe we can make some predictions about what it what it might look like. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's turn this into a 4. Let's turn this into a 3. Make this a 5. Make this a 3. So can you predict what this is going to look like? Well, these are the x values. So it looks like it should come out to 4 and negative 4 in the x direction. And the 5, it should touch it 5 times. 3 in the y direction, 3 and negative 3, and then touch it 3 times in the y direction. And again, notice our 4 in the x frames it out to 4 and negative 4. The 5, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5. And then the y direction out to 3, out to negative 3. That frames it. And the 3, how many times it repeats. Now what I'm going to encourage you to do is play around with this. Because you'll notice, uh, you'll start to notice some things like, if this is a 2, oh, 2 and the 5, that works great. But some funny things start to happen. Uh, for example, if this is a 2 and this is a 4, or a 6. Because there's something about the, the reducing of it. These will be bonus questions. This is the bonus quiz. I'm going to ask you to replicate some graphs like this, write some rules if I give you the graph. So get a little practice in on this. Uh, super fun stuff. And it's it's uh, it's basically spirograph stuff. Um, it's really fun to play around with this just to see what kind of shapes shapes you can you can make. Start throwing in different values. All right, so check it out. Uh, do the assignment and play around with this part. And hopefully that'll help you with that, that bonus.